Awesome. All right. So welcome. Welcome. First, I'd like to point out my very cool pillow. How cool is that pillow that I just had made? Pretty nice, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I always have to show off my bling. Um, I'm super excited. I had uh, bags made too, so I'm going to put them on the site for uh, for you guys to buy. I'm super psyched about that. So, um, and uh, tonight we are going to talk about probably one of the most important topics. And I have the topics kind of lined up. Um, I put them on the website. I have them in the um, uh, uh, on the website, on the Facebook page, and also in the newsletter. Um, and I kind of have them set up according to uh, the curriculum and the timeline. But um, today's topic, I'm talking about basically um, what you should have on your plate. What makes this diet so special? And kind of the warning um, behind that is it's not about the calories. Um, so often when people start a diet, uh, we right away go to thinking about restrictions. Um, and it's not about restrictions. Um, it is about that balance. It's about what is on your plate. It's about awareness. Um, uh, and oftentimes people lose track of, of that awareness. And I just did a podcast um, uh, on both of my channels um, on how I am basically always bringing awareness to the table. And just from the people that I see here um, that are, are, are joining me today, I've already caught some people um, and brought awareness to what they're doing with uh, their daily eating. And it's not that you're doing anything wrong. Um, and I, I really do uh, fault um, the advertisement and I fault the uh, um, uh, marketing world um, for getting us thinking that we're eating things that are healthy when they're not. Um, and I recently got rid of the word snack um, out of our, our repertoire, because when we think of snack, we think of um, baby carrots, we think of uh, peppers and hummus, and we think of, um, you know, crackers and cheese. And those are snacks, but those don't fill us. And I actually have a, a live example here that I'm going to use as a prop um, to show you how this type of snack does not do you any good. Um, and it only satisfies you for a short amount of time and how it is actually um, setting you back calorically. Um, and so uh, in addition to what I'm going to talk about today, I'm going to talk about um, how this plan that you're on is constructed and what makes it so special. Um, and those of you that are tuned in and watching, um, a lot of you are, are brand new. Some of you uh, have been around for a while. Some of you have been around for a, a really long time. And those of you that have been around for a really long time, and if you're listening to the recording, I didn't teach this uh, method this way years ago. Um, and so right now it is about that balance. Um, and I don't want you to fall into the trap of, of macros. Um, and during this presentation, I'm gonna talk about how dangerous um, it is to pay attention to the macro percentages. Um, and I have a clear cut example of that. Um, and I have a clear cut example of how you can go wrong with weighing and measuring. And, and basically, um, instead of wasting all of your time, spinning your wheels, doing everything right, but doing everything wrong and not seeing results, I would rather have you do everything right and see results um, and, and not waste your time. Um, and uh, I had a conversation with somebody today that was a tier one member moving on to tier two. And uh, he flat out said it was too easy for him. He's like, this was, he goes, I feel like I cheated. This was just too easy. And I said, it, it wasn't easy. You just followed my lead. You, you listened to everything I asked you to do. And I really only made you aware of everything. And that is the bottom line um, is, is that awareness. Um, all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen. Um, and I have a uh, presentation uh, to share. And uh, this again will be uh, recorded and I'm gonna show you uh, at the end where it will be um, uh, uh, stored. I'm gonna actually email it out to everybody, but um, where you can find it uh, later as well. Okay, so I'm hoping everybody could see the 
screen that says quantities and quality. Yes? Okay, so it is not just about the calories. Um, absolutely calories matter. Um, I wish they didn't, um, but they do. Um, so it is, uh, it is the perfect storm of calories plus the balance of, of what is on your plate. Um, and it is your protein, your carbs, and your fat. But you don't have to be as precise um, by having every single gram down to a science. Um, I know people that have done gram counting um, feel that, that you have to be down to that absolute gram and you really don't. Um, uh, if you back yourself up against a wall and, and get your body to be that precise, then you'll need to be that way. But uh, eating um, by the plan and making sure that you have a protein, a carb, and a fat on your plate every single time um, is really what you need in the big picture and staying within your calories. Um, keep in mind, calorie range. Um, your body does not understand that it is midnight and that your, your calories start over. It's not like a bank account. Um, it's not like a calendar. It's the big picture. So if you get 1400 one day, but then the next day you get 1550 and the next day you get 1480 and the next day you get 1600, it's the big picture. Um, but what you shouldn't do is get 1200 and then 1800 and then 1100 and then 1900. Um, so, so you, that's why I gave you that, that, that range, um, that, and there's so much human error that takes place in the way that we calculate. All right. So first of all, Set yourself up for success. Um, understanding portions is huge. Um, understanding the importance of proportions. So we have portions, how much you are eating, and we have proportions, how much of each thing we have, protein, carb, fat. Um, the pitfalls and the slippery slopes, um, and there's a lot of them, and that's the number one cause of failure. Um, and uh, understanding uh, hunger levels. Uh, on our Facebook, I'm sorry, on our um, website, I did put a hunger level chart on there and it is super important to understand your hunger levels. Uh, I had a conversation today with somebody that's lost 25 pounds and she said to me, I wish I could have recorded it. She's not with, uh, on the phone or on right now, but um, she said to me, uh, she said, I couldn't lose an ounce before. And I've lost 25 pounds. And I'm like, so what was the difference? And uh, one of the things she said is she understands her hunger levels now. Um, and that's key. Um, not feeling like you have to be full all the time um, is key. So, so that is one of the things. And being in tune with your body, um, understanding how your weight fluctuates, understanding that that's part of the process will set you up for success. Um, all right. So uh, also, are you, as you are losing weight, uh, are you plateauing or uh, is it distorted information? So as you venture through this, um, are you hitting a plateau when you are not able to lose weight anymore? Or are you just measuring food wrong? Um, and this is just a perfect example right here. A label shows with liquid. So when you buy these Bush's Best Carolini beans. Um, and on the back, it says three servings. Um, but you measure it out and you're like, wait a minute here. I don't really have three half cups of beans. Um, it's because you're getting three half cups of beans and liquid. Um, and so that is misinformation. So if you rinse them and you drain them, you're getting a lot less. Um, and so dry means you're getting a lot more. Um, so what do you do? How do you know what to measure? Um, it's, you're talking a huge caloric difference and you could look the other way and go on fitness pal and pick the smallest number. Um, but what good is that going to do you? And I see it all the time on fitness pals where I will, I'll go through people's logs and I'll be like, this person definitely picked the smallest number for everything. Um, and, and that's not going to do you justice. So be wise when you are picking your selections because it's only going to um, set you back. All right, so food scale 
versus measuring cups. So for years and years and years, I used the food scale. I'm sorry, the measuring cups. Um, my husband has always used a food scale. Um, I basically made fun of him uh, because he would put his plate on the scale and clear it out, put his potatoes on, clear it out, drizzle his dressing on, clear it out. And I just literally would sit there and roll my eyes like, um, until one day I tried it and I thought, wow, that's really, that's brilliant. <laughs> and so, so last session uh, in the summer, I, I implemented it. Um, because when I show you how easy this is, I'm, I'm ashamed to admit that his idea was, was brilliant. And don't anybody tell him. Stacy, you know him personally, don't tell him. Um, uh, he's, he's sadly upstairs with COVID right now. So um, he's uh, doesn't, uh, can't hear me, but um, so this makes it so much easier and it's so intimidating. And I think that that was my problem. I was intimidated by this. This is a lifesaver. And anybody that has used it and switched over has lost weight because it is a lifesaver. Um, and so I'm gonna present uh, this to you also. So super easy, um, very inexpensive. This is $8, we've had it forever and ever. It's foolproof. You cannot make a mistake with it. Um, and uh, let's weigh a few things. So first of all, um, units of measure. We have cups, we have ounces, we have tablespoons, we have teaspoons, we have grams. Um, if you notice on the back of any nutritional label, no matter what it is, um, next to the serving size, the calories, you're going to see in tiny little letters, the exact value in grams, no matter what it is. Um, if you haven't noticed it yet, start looking. Um, you will see whatever it is, it will say 15 calories and then it'll say in grams, what one unit is. It's on this, it's on this, it's on my hummus. So this hummus says 71 grams of weight in hummus is one serving. It's foolproof. Um, you can't do a heaping tablespoon. You can't have the wrong size tablespoon. It's foolproof. It's going to be 71 grams. This is not, not going to lie. Um, and so, so when we measure, um, we don't need to worry about cups, ounces, tablespoons, any of it. Um, you can go right to Fitness Pal and find the grams, and you will know exactly what you're getting. Uh, and it won't ma matter if the beans are dry, if the beans are cooked, if the beans are al dente. Um, think about that. Quinoa cooked, you're getting a lot more in a cup than al dente. Um, and so the calories are going to be different. So grams is the way to go. Um, and it is by far the most accurate way to measure. And I will give you an example of that a little bit later. So on Fitness Pal, or if you're using the newer um, app, um, when you go in and you put in a, a measurement, um, you will see that you have the serving size. But if you click the little arrow, um, you'll get a drop box of all the choices. Now, if you happen to pick a selection and you don't get the drop box, then you have to pick a different um, blueberry selection. Um, in the My Nut Diary, uh, what I like about it is when you put in blueberries, it pops up on the screen. Do you want cups, grams, berries, tablespoons, ounces? It gives you all the choices. Um, your foolproof way is to go with grams. Um, if you think about it, blueberries, uh, I just got an order from Mariano's. I should have brought them down. I got blueberries and they're the size of cherries. I've never seen blueberries so big. So to, to put in one berry um, would be unfair because I, I would have to think that this one berry is a lot more calories than most one berries. Um, and if I eat a ton of them in a day, then my calories are off. Okay. So grams is foolproof. All right, uh, when should you weigh? Do you weigh when you're raw? 
do you weigh when it's cooked? Um, you weigh it the way you eat it. So if you are eating the cooked chicken, you weigh it cooked. Um, always the way you eat it. If you're eating the carrots raw, then you weigh it raw. Does that make sense? Um, if you're eating potatoes raw, then weigh them raw. You're never gonna do that. Um, so, so you wouldn't weigh potatoes raw, bake them, and then eat them because that they actually shrink when they, when they cook. So you eat them in the presentation that you weigh them, okay? Now, if you are um, making a recipe and my recipe say add two pounds of raw beef, you're gonna add two pounds of raw beef in the, in the recipe, um, but you're, you're not actually taking two pounds of raw beef and consuming that. When you make that recipe, you're eating that in the portion that it's given that. So if it says eight, eight servings, you get an eighth of that. So that's, that's a different ca calculation. But when the sandwiches say three ounces of uh, turkey, you weigh the ounces of turkey, obviously after it's cooked, um, you don't weigh it raw and then cook it. And there's a big difference. Um, chopped or whole, um, huge difference. Um, I can chop up grapes really small and fit a lot more in a cup. Um, same thing with an apple. So make sure you ask if you have questions. Um, don't just do it and overeat, do it right. Um, avoid the frustration um, because uh, I think deep inside you know what the answer would be. So here's, here's a quick rundown. We have almonds, almonds. We have oatmeal, raw, cooked. Quinoa, raw cooked. And my favorite, grapes, this is the best example sliced. Here we go. 520 for a cup of whole almonds, 780 if they're chops. 150 for a half a cup of cooked oatmeal, 318 if it's raw. 220 for a half a cup of quinoa cooked, 624 raw. So if you are not paying attention, um, it's gonna get you. And uh, what does that say? 70 calories for a cup of whole grapes. Um, but then if you chop them up really small, you can get a lot more in that cup. So uh, if we're weighing them in grams, it's foolproof because you're going to get the same number, period. If I say a half a cup, it's a half a cup. Or if I say 40 grams, it's 40 grams. All right, so what about questionable portion, portion sizes? Um, my favorite is when I go to Costco and I go th through the chips and I'm like, oh, look at these sweet potato chips. These are healthy, 150 calories for an ounce of chips. But I have no idea how much an ounce of chips is, right? Well, an ounce doesn't sound like a lot, so it must be not a lot, right? Wrong. <laughs> so, so you have no idea how much an ounce of chips is until you get it home and you put the ounce of chips, which is 28 grams on the food scale. And when you take the ounce of chips and you put it on the food scale and you see that you only get, you know, 10 chips for 150 calories, it's not that great of a deal. Um, or you can look at the serving size and see that the little bag of chips is only four servings and you could eat that in no time. So, so pay attention when it's ambiguous. Um, sometimes you do get the number of straws or chips written there, but uh, the foolproof way is to look at the grips and throw it on the food scale because then there is no question. Um, and I see that a lot. All right, so as far as the macros go, never look at percentages. Um, I, I, I wish I could get my fitness pal to take the percentages off the app um, because here you have uh, all these different percentages. What do they mean? Um, Google it. I, I challenge anybody when we're done tonight, Google what are the ideal macros for weight loss. You're going to get this. You're going to get this. You're going to get this. Then you might get this, this or this. 
you might get this, this, or this. You know why? Because there, there is no magic number. There is no macro percentage that matters. And this is the reason. So if, if there's anything that you're going to pay attention to, um, pay attention to this. I've, I've said many times I want to take down that my Get You Fit logo back there and put this, this up behind there because I talk about this all the time. This is why you should not look at macros. Let's just say you joined a program and you were given this macro chart. You have to stay 45%, 30% carb, 25% fat, right? And now you're living by this. You're just like diligent, like hit my macros, hit my macros. And so here is a perfect example of a macro dinner that's got 45% protein, 30% carb, 25% fat. We got the fat right here, the, the avocado. The carbs are your vegetables and your quinoa and your protein here is your chicken. It's beautiful. You hit your macros, woohoo. All right, so person next to you. I hit my macros, check it out. I went to Red Robin, I had this cheeseburger and I can't believe it. I put it in Fitness Pal and I hit my macros, Irene. I'm not losing weight. Well, the cheese and this grease here from the cheeseburger, there's your fat. Um, the carb is this hamburger bun and the protein as bad as it is, greasy right there, see that grease right there? That's, that's still protein. Um, is, this, is this essential? Any of these essential ingredients? None of them are. So this macro chart means nothing. Um, because I could be sitting here eating my quinoa, avocado, egg white concoction, and the person next to me could be eating brownies and cheese curds. And at the end of the day, we're going to have the same macro percentages. And at the end of the day, we both know who's going to have a better uh, metabolism. So do not look at those percentages. Um, instead, what you want to look at are the types of foods that are on your plate. Um, and the types of foods that are on your plate are what I teach as the essential ingredients and the non-essential ingredients. Um, and that is, that is what I've been drilling into your head so far this first month. The chart that you have um, that I'm going to pull up after I do some measuring here. Um, you want to stick to those ingredients. You want to stick to the healthy fats. You want to stick to the healthy um, uh, proteins and you want to stick to the healthy carbs. Um, and as long as you are getting each of those things in each meal, then you're golden, especially that at the beginning. Um, uh, once your weight starts sticking, then we got to get a little fancier with zoning in on the grams, but at the beginning, just make sure you're hitting those essentials. Um, so speaking of essentials, we have avocados and we have hummus. Hummus, I, I, I feel bad. I feel like I'm this like hummus, like Nazi. Um, I love hummus. Um, I tell the story all the time. First time I I had hummus was back in like 2010. Costco first came out with it. It was that big tub, you know, that still sold and I got it. And I was like, oh my God, this is so good. I was training for a marathon and, and I think I ate it in like three days, baby carrots. And so at the end of the three days, I looked at the uh, uh, calories and it said 80 calories, one ounce. I'm like 80 calories, awesome. Um, but it said 53 servings. So I was like 53 times 80, oops. <laughs> so I had consumed 4,000 calories in three days. So that made me take out my food scale and weigh the hummus. Um, and so I'm gonna do that right now. And I'm gonna show you um, uh, how, how vital it is that you weigh things. Um, uh, avocados also. Um, when you just go in fitness pal and you pick out avocado and you put in a half of an avocado, um, 
just this example alone, um, it's unfair to put in a half of an avocado or a third of an avocado because we have all these avocados. They're all different sizes. Um, they're all different weights. Um, the, the, the pits are all different weights and sizes. So you're getting different amounts of fruit um, within each one. Even the way you uh, cut it, you're gonna get different weights. Um, and so when I go on Fitness Pal and I see that you are eating you know, 85 calories of avocado in every meal from March until November, then I know you're, you're not weighing your avocado. It would be too random that you, your avocado is the same weight. Um, and, and I'm not suggesting that every single time you do it, but at the beginning, just so that you have an idea around-ish what an avocado weighs, because we fall into these, these uh, mind games that the, the numbers are lower than, than what they actually are, okay? Um, same thing goes with apples. Um, and peanut butter is the nemesis. Um, if you've read my book, uh, I, I joke about peanut butter, but I really did lose 20 pounds uh, when I cut out peanut butter once because I was just eating it, not like like a crazy person, but like, a, like you know, I put it on my salary and, you know, have a tablespoon here and there. But um, my podcast today, hold up your thumb, this, your thumb, this much peanut butter is a hundred calories. Um, it does not go very far. And, and unless you put it on the food scale and, and see how dense it is, um, you're eating a lot more of it than you realize. Um, so for, for ensured success, weigh, measure, and log. And, and it, it's hard for me to constantly preach this, but a couple of things happen. You become uh, aware of it. You become aware of the amounts that you're taking in, but then I'm able to go on your log and see exactly what you're doing. And you are um, able to understand your intake um, and really second guess what you're doing. Um, and so I'm going to, I'm going to really quick give you an example of the hummus, and then I'm going to pull up the, um, essential ingredients and kind of talk about, um, meal selection and then open up the floor for, for questions. Okay. So, um, one of the, one of the things that I used to do a lot, um, before I was able to get my weight um, under control is, is mindlessly snack. And instead of having snacks like I uh, have implemented in my, in my meal plan now, or our mini meals, um, I would have snacks, like we all have snacks. Love these, right? They're just so easy and so convenient. And honestly, I would not log them because I consider them to be free. <laughs> you know, they're, they're, they're free, right? So I'm gonna give you an example of how free they're not. Um, and so uh, could I get somebody uh, in the audience here that is pretty fluent with Fitness Pal? Um, who do I have that's pretty good with it to, that knows grams to uh, do the dirty work for me? Um, I'm gonna weigh these. If you can go on Fitness Pal and put in uh, grams of what this is um, so that I can make it faster. So if not, I could do it. So here is, um, there we go. All right, so here's what you do. I'll be so mad if it's dead. Oh, here we go. Okay, so gram, if it's not on gram, then you switch it out. Uh, you can hit the different units, but it's already on gram. All right, so. 28, 57, well, let's do three. Let's be fair, hang on, I'm not gonna eat this done. Seventy. Anybody doing this for me? If not, I could do it. Seventy-five. 
70 grams of peppers. You want to know the calories of it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's 25. 25 calories total? For 70 grams? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Not bad. Practically free. Okay. You like my cut on my finger? I went all the way to the bone. Mm -hmm. my, my son sharpened my brand new knives and, <laughs> and then I used it on my hand on accident. That was so much fun. Um, I got this new off topic. I got this new glue for, uh, for cuts. I haven't even needed to put a bandaid on. Isn't that amazing? Little advertisement. Okay, so the hummus. So I happen to know that this hummus the calories of this hummus already because it's in the little cup and i want you guys to know i bought the these i'm running a 100 mile race this weekend um and this is the only reason i bought these is because i need a lot of calories um normally i would not uh purchase such a a thing i don't i don't know i normally would buy like the big the big ones so check this out now i already know how many calories are in this but I want you to, uh, to, to see how I would weigh this out, okay? So I'm just gonna go, I should have brought a plate down here. Mm. I'm just gonna go uh, old school here, let's put it right on, let's just go right on the, pretend we're just dipping, okay? So I've cleared it out to zero, which means that theoretically, the uh, the hummus is going to, the total amount of hummus is gonna be on, okay? So this is a normal, I would do this, right? So that's one. You know, just having a little snack, two. I mean, am I a pig that I put that much hummus on my stuff? But I do. Three. There's a little left. Okay, 130 grams of hummus. All right, so uh, who would like to put that in? Oh my God, doesn't this look so good? I wanna eat it so bad. <laughs> um, uh, 130 uh, grams of hummus. But isn't that including the peppers too? Uh, You'd have to you have to subtract the, yes. the grams of the hummus or the yep. peppers, right? Yep, 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 yep. Which were how much? Seventy one or something, yep. didn't you say? Mm -hmm. Yep. Seventy. So so seventy minus that's sixty grams of hummus, right? Uh, 60, yep. Is someone figuring it out? Yeah, I was just looking. Okay. I'm just trying to find one with grams. Oh, I found one, okay. So, tribe, so the tribe hummus. It is the uh, Kirkland organic hummus. Hmm. So Sabra hummus for 60 grams is 159 calories, it says. For, for that many, uh, for that many uh, grams? Yeah. Okay, so 159. Yeah. Plus the, the peppers. Yeah, I don't remember what the calories were on that. <laughs> Wasn't it like 50 or something? It was 25. Okay, so we're looking at 200 calories, and just to give you a visual, 200 calories, there is literally no, pro I mean, the, the amount of protein that's in here is uh, how do they expect people to see these little letters, like three grams, 
there's there, this is not unhealthy. Don't get me wrong. But if you were to eat this for the 200 some calories, you would be, first of all, if you could stop at this, um, second of all, you're going to be hungry instantly later. Your mini meals are constructed of 25 grams of protein, 16 grams of healthy fat, 30 grams of carbs for an extra 100 calories. So if you eat any of your mini meals, you're going to want, you're going to be full. You're not going to want to eat for three or three or so hours. Um, and, and it's, it's, believe me, I know these, these look delicious, but when you are looking to solve the problem of weight loss, you're looking to um, improve your metabolic rate. You're looking to not be as hungry in between meals. You're looking to um, not overeat at night. So at three o'clock, my biggest problem has always been overeating at night. Um, and so I have this rule, no matter what, at three, three thirty, four, I have a mini meal. Um, and if I eat a, a meal like this, then I'm going upstairs and I'm literally eating everything in sight before I eat dinner. Um, still to this day, uh, if I eat a mini meal, which is got my 25 grams of protein, my 15, 16 grams of healthy fat and my 30 grams of carbs, then I'm just eating my dinner and I'm not wanting to eat everything in sight. Um, and so those mini meals that are on your meal plan are all constructed um, in that manner. And so if you, if you don't um, uh, want to use one of the mini meals that's on your plan, um, I just lost you guys. Um, can you guys still see me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, yes. If you, don't, if you don't want to use one of the mini meals that's on your plan, um, you can construct one of your own by taking uh, the essential chart. Um, and the essential chart is as soon as I can, I hope I don't, I hope I don't lose you all because my computer's being weird now. Um, the essential chart is uh, on your meal plan. It's on uh, the website and I will actually put it um, on your, um, hang on, I'm gonna try to, I'm, I'm stuck. Would, can you guys see me? Yes, I can see Yes. It. Yeah. Okay. I can see only my, my big, I'm hitting escape. I can only see my, I can't see you guys. Um, uh, um, I have uh, the essential chart and I have a non-essential chart. So to be clear, um, cheese is non-essential. Um, hummus is non-essential. Um, that doesn't mean that you can't have it. Um, that just means that it goes into your extra calorie bank. Um, so it's kind of like putting non-quality gas in your tank. Um, it's going to get you just a couple miles further, but it, it, it's not going to fuel you the way you need to be fueled for the long run. Um, it's not going to improve your metabolic rate. It's not going to drive your metabolism the way we want it to drive it. Um, if you have one of the mini meals that's on your meal plan, and by the way, month, uh, month two, for those of you that are uh, new, um, will be up on the site um, uh, this week, um, you're going to get a whole slew of new mini meals and a mini meal could be anything. You could do uh, an omelet as a mini meal. So if you are feeling like that, that urge to, to eat, um, it's not just have a snack, fill up those calories. It is protein, carb, and fat. Um, and so I, I once used to teach it this way, um, picture each meal needing to be the perfect shade of purple, lavender. Um, and your proteins are your reds, your carbs are your blue, your fats are your white. Um, if you are eating a meal and it is just protein and carb, then your plate is purple. Um, you need it to be lavender, which means you need to go find a healthy fat. Um, which means you need to go find a healthy fat, which is your white, and now it's lavender. Um, if you are eating uh, almonds, that's just a fat. So your meal is just white, um, can't have just white. So you need to go find red, you need to go find blue. Um, so with your almonds, you need to find a protein, 
um, and you need to find a carb. So if you look on your meal plan, egg, rice cake, boom, you have lavender. Um, for dinner, I'm making salmon. Um, salmon is a protein um, and a fat. So that right there is, is my red um, and my white. So I just need to add my blue, um, which is my carb. So I'm gonna add rice with that. I have my lavender. So as long as you have all three, and as long as each one of your, your plates ends up with lavender paint, you're golden. Um, today, I, I talked to somebody who was just nailing everything and um, she wanted to switch up her, her nighttime snack and she had made up a new nighttime snack and um, she didn't have uh, the, the, uh, the fat with it. And I'm like, need the white, white's fat, fat is white, lavender, bingo. So think of it that way too, which will help. Um, so no more of this is a nothing. This is this is not a, a protein, carb, or fat. It's kind of a, it doesn't have enough of a protein, a carb, or a fat for it to count for anything. So it's just kind of a, a nothing. So a non-essential. So questions. I actually have a question about the hummus. Have you ever... Because isn't it made from chickpeas? It is. So chickpeas are beans. Um, and, and beans are a protein and a carb. Um, and so when you... Uh, and this has tahini in it, which is a fat. So it is all three. But here's the problem with it. Um, in order for you to get 25 grams of protein, carb, and fat with this, you'd have to eat a lot of it. Um, and because it's so caloric, because you have to mash the beans and then add the olive oil and add the tahini, which is uh, sesame seed paste, um, the, the concentrated form of it, which is the hummus. Um, so in, in this much is 130 calories, you're not getting um, enough of those essential numbers to, to qualify as being a... Um, uh, an essential. Does that make sense? So, so you can use it, but I say use it like a, like a spread, use it as like a mayonnaise. So if you're going to use it and it's on your meal plan, use it, uh, two tablespoons, just like you would mayonnaise. So I put a little on my eggs, but again, two tablespoons, measure it on the food scale. Um, because it will add up. If you use it as a dip, you will for sure go over. Does, does that make and then, sense? Yeah, it does. And then, then the eggs, the the yolk is a healthy fat, right? Correct. And then you were using this mini meal, 16 grams of fat, 25 healthy protein, 30 carbs. Is yeah. there something different for a full meal then? No, they're all the same. They're okay. pretty much all the same. Now, again, don't, um, I got my screen back though. So I can see you guys. <laughs> um, so let me, um, let me pop open those, um, those charts. Um, the, uh, actually, I'm going to share the screen and show you where to find them. Okay. So when you go on um, our Facebook page, those of you are, our, why do I do that? Our actual uh, website. Um, you, I'm sorry, what was your last question? I was asking if there was a difference between a mini and a full oh. meal. Yeah, no, there's not. Um, but if you were to not eat as large of, of a meal, let's just say you were going to have like a middle of the day um, snack and, and the calories were just a little less, then the proportions would be less. But the way that I have them set up on the plan, they're all about 350-ish calories. Your dinner might be a little bit more, but it doesn't need to be. So, so, but one thing that I didn't mention is um, anything that's non-essential. Um, and so really quick, let me show you um, uh, on the website. If you go to the resource page up here, first off, um, this webinar will be posted uh, under webinars along with all the other ones. So if you wanna check out any of the other ones um, and it will also be emailed out. But if you click on resource page, um, I have a bunch of quick tips here. Uh, my bagel recipe, my pizza recipe, um, corn tortilla, little tutorials. These are all like three minutes long. 
Um, down here, I have the hunger chart, um, but I have the non-essential list and the essential list. So if you look at the essential list, these are all the essential proteins, carbs, fats. So let's make a meal. Uh, you want pancakes in the morning? You can have pancakes as long as they're 100 to 150 calories, but you just can't have pancakes because um, that would just be a carb. So you need to add a protein with it. So uh, pancake with a thing of protein powder maybe, or a, a thing of Greek yogurt or an egg. Um, and now you need to add a healthy fat with it. So uh, 100 calories of um, peanut butter. See how you created your meal? Um, uh, you can take any of these and create a meal as long as it is one from each category. Now, I will tell you, if you're a tier one person and you're just starting out, um, I would encourage you to try and stick to the plan as much as possible because the more you kind of ad lib, the more mistakes you're gonna make um, or clear it with me or, or make sure you tell me to check out your, your log uh, to make sure. Um, but dinner, um, you wanna make some uh, lamb chops, side of quinoa and uh, some, you know, uh, whatever, avocado, just make sure that the grams are all in there and that you're hitting it right. Now, if you have uh, essential, non-essential ingredients, um, can you have these things? Could you, could you have pork belly? Yeah, um, but that comes out of your, their, your allowance. Um, so if, if you eat pork belly, um, you're getting now 300 calories for four ounces instead of 150 calories for four ounces, which means you're going to run out of calories. Um, so you can't do it often. Um, could you have uh, some cookies? You can, but again, that comes out of your bank. Um, uh, what about, what about, uh, uh oh, I got to take avocado off of this. What happened here? I got to fix this. Um, so uh, what about half and half in your coffee? Um, you can have it, but again, it comes out of your allowance. Um, on the flip side, if you are looking at your meal plan, month one, and you decide that you really don't wanna put cheese on your sandwich, um, you wanna save the cheese or, or the fruit, you could take that out because they're non-essentials. Um, and now you have extra calories uh, for later for that cookie or that glass of wine. Um, so you can omit non-essentials. Um, you can't omit essentials. So fruit, cheese, butters, salad dressings, anything off of the non-essential chart here, um, which I have to find again, uh, you can omit. Um, anything off of the essential chart, you cannot. So you cannot omit anything off of this chart, but anything off of the uh, non-essential chart, which is this one here, you can omit. Obviously I have to fix this. Um, any of that you can omit and, and save the calories. So I'm all about that. You know, if you have, 200 calories you saved and you want to have eight ounces of wine party on or honestly if you have 200 calories left and you want to eat these you can because you saved calories from cheese for this that's totally fine but no taking chicken off your salad to have wine and that's going to catch up with you okay so questions i had a question I mean, I Oh, yeah. sorry. Sorry, I'll go. Um, okay. um, I had a question. I don't know how to address rice. So when you make rice, you're looking at the, con the container and um, it's measuring, it's giving you the calories and all the, fi the facts for dry, but you're yeah. making, like it'll tell you a third of a cup, which means 
dry, mm -hmm. how do you realistically measure rice after you've cooked it? Because you're not going to make just a serving with so rice. So what you would do is, um, well, you would have to be crafty with the way that you measure it. So if you, if you were to take, uh, uh, so for example, if I make, um, I take two full cups when I make it. Um, and I end up with uh, four cooked cups. But see, it depends because sometimes um, I get more or less depending on how, how it cooks. So if I take my two full cups, um, I divide that up by like the eight servings. So you, you, would have to, you would have to split it up. But I see what your point is. So the best way to do that is, is to weigh it. So if you go on Fitness Pal, and you put in um, cooked rice in grams and weigh it that way, you'll get the closest figure. Would you say that all rice would be the same? So for example, I have this rice that's a medley of like a red rice and a, mm -hmm. and a brown rice and a, um, a, a wild rice. Yeah. Would you, is it all pretty much the same as the white or the they're, brown they're, or? They're, clo they're close, but no, they're not the same um, because they weigh different. So a, a medley like that, you're going to have, it's going to be heavier. So I'm guessing it's going to be more calorically dense. Um, so I would, what I would do is look at the, the grams on the back or send me a picture of it when you do it. And then I'll advise you. Um, because it is definitely going to be different. So like that, what is that bal balsami rice? It's kind of That's like, thin. yeah, that is a lot lighter than jasmine rice. Um, and I've noticed that when you cook it, it's a totally different texture. So you're getting all different uh, weights. So the best way to do it is to go by what the label says and uh, cook it and weigh it. And also too, you know, depending on how you cook it, if you overcook the rice, you're going to get puffier rice. So you're, you can pack it. I mean, you could really smush in a lot more in a cup. So weighing it is going to give you the best um, figure, like putting it on a food scale. Okay. Does that make sense? A little bit. Um, it, it's the, it's where I struggle where they tell you the serving is a third of a cup dry but you're not eating a third of a cup dry and you're cooking a whole dry cup. See, that's, that's what really gets confusing. For yeah. Me. Text me about it. I think what you would do is you yeah. would divide it up after the fact, but, but there's, there's crafty ways of doing it. So, so if you, if you cooked a whole cup, um, you would take that portion, you would know how many calories is in that portion. Let's just say it was 300 calories for a, a third of a cup you'd have 900 calories when you were done. Now you have 900 calories, you, you could weigh that and divide that up per cup and you would know what it was. Okay, I'll text you though. Yeah, yeah, text me. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, someone else had a question? Irene, I did. Um, I have a question about changing things to grams on um, the app, Fitness yeah. Pal. Yeah. Do I look for the actual, like, like we're looking at cooked rice right now. So, um, the wild rice is one, you know, it just says cup, but then there's another one that says white cooked rice, a hundred grams, uh -huh. you know? So how do you, do you change the amount or do I just go, just look for the one that has a gram has grams on it? You got to find one that says grams. So okay. uh, just keep, funneling through Keep to the farm as your, yeah and then once you do it'll be in your uh my fitness pal and then you won't have to keep looking every single time okay okay and then again one so we have five mini meals a day basically is what we're having okay approximately now if you're somebody that gets you know 1400 calories then you know one of your mini meals is going to have to be you know a little fewer you know, less, lesser calories. Um, and, and if that were, if that's the case, um, you know, you're, you know, if you have a mini meal that is, um, you know, 300 calories, a lot of them might be 300 calories, 300, 350 calories. Um, even with five, 
you know, you're most people, I don't have anybody that's under 400 calories. So most people are at about 15 to 1700 calories. So if you run into a problem um, and you're not getting all your calories in, uh, text me. And, and remember you have that buffer too. Okay, another question is, I don't see a lot of um, vegetables as like, like broccoli and things like that on your, your menus mm -hmm. um, as much as, you know, that, because what we would do is a lot of times just eat like fish and broccoli or yeah. something, you know what I mean? Of course, it didn't taste as wonderful as your stuff, but you know, we, I, so, uh, so we can still have all that. Yeah. It's oh, just, yeah. yeah. So that, that would be your, like your dinner carb. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. And so the, the, the meals that you've all planned out are the 25, 16, 30, the mini. Okay. All right. Yep. Yep. But if okay. you were to create, if you were to create one of your own, like tonight, my dinner is the, you know, the salmon, the salmon and, and the, and I'm just doing salmon with broccoli. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. Yep. Thank uh, you. Sure. Other uh, questions? So a lot of the meals um, say like half a cup of blueberries or half a cup of strawberries um, to measure that in grams, like what should we do as a comparable or should we still just do the half a cup? Well, it's your lucky day because uh, the month two plan uh, and moving on are all in grams. Um, and there is a month one version uh, that's in grams too. I just don't like okay. to freak people out <laughs> and, and send that out right away. So um, what I'll do is I will put that on the site uh, tomorrow morning. So if you guys want to, you know, reference that, but when you get your new plan, um, what I've done is it'll say um, 50, uh, it'll say a half a cup of blueberries or 50 grams. So I, I don't swipe it from beneath you. Um, awesome. I have both versions. So it'll say 230 grams of yogurt or one cup, um, all the way up to month nine. I have both, both versions. Um, and so, and it's not what you think. This was a learning curve for me. Um, a hundred grams of, of grapes you would think would be the same as hundred grams of blueberries. But they're not, I, I can't figure that out. Um, I thought like a half a cup of apples would be the same as a half a cup of grapes. It, it, it's so weird. I can't figure it out. So they're all really different. Um, so the only thing I didn't do was if the measurement is large um, and pay, pl please pay attention to this next part. The word gram is a synonym. There's gram as in weight, right? Gram. And then there's gram as in gram of protein. It's a synonym, I can't change that. So when I say 25 grams of protein, I don't mean take chicken and, and eat 25 grams of it on the food scale. Do you get what I'm saying? I mean, eat 25 grams of it, the macronutrients of, of chicken. So, so to keep that from getting confusing, um, because our meat is always going to be heavy, it's always going to be more than, uh, you know, a light amount. Um, meat is always going to be in ounces because um, when we measure meat, you're always going to be eating at least three, four, five, six grams, uh, I'm sorry, uh, ounces. And if you were to put four ounces of meat in grams, it would be like, you know, 480 grams of chicken. Um, so, so we measure meat in ounces. Okay. So just, just know that. Um, uh, the reason for grams is it's a small unit. It's a tiny unit. So if I were to measure this in ounces, it would be like 0.1276, you know, ounces. So that's just be aware of that. Um, so when you look at your dinner recipes uh, coming up in month two and month four and month upwards, um, the dinner recipes, because those are larger units, um, those aren't in grams because, you know, you're, you're putting in, you know, two cups of, you know, carrots um, and, and, and we don't need to put, you know, 
780 grams of carrots on the, on the food scale. So it's just the meals, the smaller amounts, because that's when your line of error is going to happen is when you're measuring a cup, uh, slivers, mm -hmm. tablespoons. Do you get what I'm saying? So um, the, the month one um, plan, actually, you know what I'll do is I'll put it um, in the letter that this recording will be in so that you guys will have the PDF and I'll put up on the site. Um, um, and it's, there's not a whole lot, but it's enough for you guys to kind of start practicing with it. Um, and I, you know, I love it. The, the, the food scale way, let me just quick show you one, one other thing and then we'll go, um, is when you are using this food scale, um, one of the things that I really like about it, let's just pretend that this is, um, this is my salad, right? Let's just pretend this is my salad um, and my plate rather. So this is my dinner plate, right? Let's just say I'm going to add um, dressing to this. Um, I would just clear this out. Mm -hmm. So hit clear. I not only don't have my glasses on, but it's upside down. Okay, so now I'm at zero. And now if I'm going to add um, salad dressing to this, I would just take my salad dressing and literally pour it on. So if I would get uh, 30 grams of salad dressing, what I would do is literally just keep pouring this on until I got to the 30. So let me give you a little example. Oh. Okay, it's all I get. And then I'm done. So pour it on. And, and now I don't need, I don't need cups and spoons and just literally pour mm -hmm. it on out the door. You yeah, know? that's what I started doing when you told me about the the whole gram stuff. <laughs> so yeah. like, it's it's so easy just to hit the reset button. Yeah, yeah, so much easier. Um, yeah, my husband and I put the bowl button. on first too. like, I'll put uh -huh. the bowl on and then I'll hit the reset button. And then I'll just start filling it with the, yep. you know, yeah, the yogurt exactly. or the whatever. Yeah. Yep. Um, uh, what he does too, is he'll take uh, the walnuts, almonds, whatever, he'll put it, the whole big container on there, clear it out and then pull them out and do the negative. So he'll have like negative 20 grams and then he knows he's taking them all out. Um, right, one yeah. Them walks by and takes a handful and confuses them. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, oopsie. So anyways, um, so I hope tonight was helpful. Um, Thursday, I am going to do uh, another uh, workshop though. So workshops different than presentation. Um, it's going to be on logging, actually logging. So uh, we are going to actually do some hands on um, my fitness pal logging, you guys are going to be logging while I'm logging, and I'm going to show you how you can manipulate um, ingredients and uh, change things. So if your uh, shake is a little low on protein, um, or your omelet's a little high on fat, um, how we can tweak those numbers so that you can um, be a little bit more precise on your, um, on your figures. So it'll just get you there, okay? Awesome. And, and then for the workshops, do we just uh, go onto the website and you'll yeah. resume so all I'm, that also? Yeah. You guys can always just hop on. You, you know, I always like to have a head count, um, but if you don't, that's fine. Um, so you'll always get the invitation. If you want to click, I'm coming, great. But when you see the, the big ones go out for the, for the public for the $5, that does not include you. Just forward them to your friends, um, but you guys don't have to pay anything. You just are part of it. Just hop on right through my website. Okay. okay? Awesome. Great. Cool. Thank you. We'll have to do a live workout one of these times. That would be fun. That would be fun. I'll, I'll say that it's a wine night and then I'll be like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. Wine with a WH? Just kidding. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right, you guys. Have a good night. I will. Uh, all right. Thanks. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.